Hello sweetest potatoes. Similar to our fall nighttime routine, let's loosely reference traditional Chinese medicine once again for what kind of self-care to partake in for winter to take care of our emotional health. Whereas the energy of autumn is descending with the falling of leaves, dropping of temperature, and harvesting of foods, the energy of winter is dark, deep, and cool. The nights are longer, it's cold AF, and winter just somehow hits differently compared to all the other seasons, which makes winter all about partaking in soul-nourishing activities, self-reflection, looking inward, and meditating even more so than fall. Winter is essentially the more intense older sister version of autumn, all about cultivating the inner self on an even deeper level, including resting, restoring, replenishing, and revitalizing the mind, body, and soul. As seen in the yin-yang symbol, winter represents the depth of yin, where quiet, slow, and inward energy dominates, which can probably explain said season hitting differently. However, within the depths of yin, there's still an underlying spark of yang waiting to emerge. Winter is known as hidden beginnings. Within stillness, energy is gathering beneath the surface, waiting to shoot up and prosper come springtime. As a continuation of our How to Unpotato Your Life challenge, we're spending every week of January focusing on a different dimension of self-care. We've covered physical and mental wellness so far. Today, we're on emotional wellness, being aware of our feelings, positively handling stress, as well as well as cultivating compassion, love, and kindness for ourselves and others. Before talking about food, which I'm very excited to talk about, I want to first show how I've been using found time to read more. Specifically, I'm reading Turning Pro, which is my theme for the year. What we get when we turn pro is we find our power, we find our will and our voice, and we find our self-respect. We become who we always were, but had until then been afraid to embrace and live out. I've been very intentional with swapping out time I reach for my phone to scroll Instagram to picking up my Kindle instead, whether it be going to the bathroom, taking a breather on my couch, or waiting for my soup to boil. 2019 and 2020 were years for audiobooks where I preferred to listen over read. This year may very well be the year of the Kindle. All right, if emotional health is defined as the ability to successfully handle life stressors and adapt to change and difficult times, many, many things feed into how we're able to handle life stressors, including taking care of our diet. Although what we eat falls better into the physical wellness bucket, think of all the times you were angry and or moody only to find that all you needed was a glass of water to de-raisin or some food to saturate your hanger. I know this all too well. According to traditional Chinese medicine, warm, hearty, nourishing foods help restore nutrients into our bodies. Thick stalks and bone broth are also great, as well as eating black-colored foods like black beans, sesame seeds, and seaweed. My mom's been telling me since I was a little peewee that white foods are also still great for winter as it is for fall, so daikon seaweed tofu bone broth miso soup it is. Another way I rest and restore is to wind down with some K-dramas. I'm currently watching True Beauty and Mr. Queen. Both are hilarious and lovely shows so far. I know it may not be the best to be distracted when you're eating and be glued to a screen, but sometimes I prefer watching shows while I eat so I don't spend the rest of my evening on my phone or on my laptop watching. That is yummy. Okay. I'm gonna clean the dishes up really quickly, put the rest of the food back in the fridge, and then move on with the rest of the evening. I'm gonna try on some glasses because I'm in some desperado need of new glasses, new prescription glasses. I'm going to journal a little after, take a shower, put on a face mask, and finish the rest of True Beauty. Then go to bed. Okay. Whee! This next point is mostly making time to take care of yourself and to do the things you've been putting off for a very long time. 
I discovered Warby Parker years ago around the same time Tom's shoes became a thing. This to me was the era of for-profit before good companies where companies would donate, say, in Warby Parker's case, a pair of glasses to someone in need with every pair of glasses sold, which I think is awesome. Warby Parker also has a free at-home try-on program, which is what I'm trying on now. You can order five pairs of glasses to try in the comfort of your own home for free for five days. There's absolutely no obligation to buy. Shipping is free and there's a prepaid return label included with your order. Okay, I think these are my favorite so far. Sorry, there's a glare. How do I block it? I like this one. And these fits. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I like these. So these are the ones that I've had for over five years now. You guys may have seen it in my older videos. I never really wear glasses in the videos because it just has the glare. And you can't really see my face. So this is the one that I've had. I love this one. It's called Chamberlain. My prescription hasn't changed too much. If anything, it got lower, which I think is an absolute miracle considering how much time we're spending indoors in front of our computers, either working or just watching shows. Here's a friendly reminder to get your eyes checked. If you haven't done it in a while, you either surprise yourself with it decreasing or you'll surprise yourself that you should have gotten glasses a long, long time ago. This is a huge part of self-care that maybe we don't talk about as much. Our health, the health of every single one of our body parts, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, oral care, everything. So important. Let's go to that side of the room to do some journaling. I'm watching too many K-dramas. Oh my God, that was uh, cringe. cringe. If you're in the market for new glasses, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. Sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available. You can try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Rowena. Next up, time for some self-reflection. I'm going to be using Eileen from Lavender's Artist of Life workbook. I know we just finished our own series of how to unpotato your life and this is technically ongoing and some of the questions are repetitive, but I think there's a difference between talking through my dreams and it's just nice being told what to do every once in a while. So on the topic of looking inward, winter is a great time to look at our fears, try to name it, and ask ourselves why it's there. At the same time, it's also important to practice self-acceptance. Observe your fears without judgment to enable a sense of freedom from them. Be a gentle witness to yourself. Don't worry about overcoming your fears, but rather recognize and accept that they exist and try to understand why. What desires and passions fill my heart and how is it in turn molding my mind? Find your values, discover what's important to you and focus on that. If we're able to do this, we'll be able to keep our emotional health in tip top shape. If you need some help, may I suggest week three of our how to unpotato your life challenge where we identify our life buckets, values and what's most important to us. Wink, wink. That was great. So I got through a good chunk of it and I'm feeling pretty good. There's still a bit more to go. I think I'm gonna call it a night. One of the main things that came up was this fear around being judged, this fear around disappointing others, or this fear that when I show my true self, there'll be people who don't like that. And I think these days, with a lot of the cancel culture, dragging culture, tea culture, like whatever you want to call it. It's just, it can be a pretty scary time, but at the same time, I think this year is the year that I want to be true to myself and stay true to myself in whatever capacity that means, I don't know, but whatever it is, continue to be who I am, be committed to all the things that I'm doing, 
and if things come up, if opportunities arise, don't let fears of others and other thoughts and disappointing others and all of that, don't let that stop me from being who I am. Letting, letting more of my true self show, you know? The quirky, goofy side that you guys have seen more of this year, but maybe not as much in the previous years because I just feel like I'm just, you know? Like I'm more buttoned up, just I want to be the version that you guys want me to be, but I think the version that you guys want me to be is myself, so let's do that. And we have a couple more things I want to do tonight. I would like to shower, but I actually think my hair is okay, so maybe I'll just go another day without showering. I will wash my face, put on a face mask, relax a little, and... Maybe meditate a little before bed because that was another big thing that I kept writing. Meditate, qigong, read more. So <laughs> let's do that. Okay. Just want to show you guys one thing before I wash my face. <laughs> I got my little chair that I was telling you guys about. Yeah, let's do that. It swivels. Yes, 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 yes. As we wind down the evening with the one self-care activity I'm most consistent with, besides face mask, I wish I face masked more, let's talk a little more about willpower. The spirit of winter is zhi, or willpower. It's the steady determination and consistency in how we live our day-to-day -day life. And it's interesting that there's a different meaning for willpower in the East and the West. In the West, willpower is defined as control exerted to do something or restrain impulses. In the East, willpower is defined as the anchor for our inner nature. Very similar to the analogy we mentioned a few videos ago where if you're grounded in your values and who you are, no matter how hard the wind blows and how big the waves are, your ship will sway but it's still within the radius of the anchor. This is very much the East's definition of will. I'm quoting this from an article that I read online. I'm trying to find it, but struggling a little, but I'll do my best to link it down below. When the anchor is strong and firm, one can change orientation without losing one's sense of self. A truly strong will is determined, but also adaptable. Life is constantly changing and requires resilience and the ability to adapt and transform. What this means to me is that while self-control and determination is needed, there's also an element of going with the flow and honoring the changing of season in our lives. Of course, fundamentally, this comes at the expense of knowing who we are and what we value. Just like how there's two sides to everything in life, like the yin and yang, there's a yang side of willpower, which is the Western take on willpower, self-control, determination, and a yin side of willpower, which is the Eastern take, the anchor, honoring seasons and all that good stuff so in this season in our life let's be intentional with how and where we're spending our time and energy focus our time on activities that we're drawn to and let go of things that don't align with our heart as the depths of this season is welcoming us with open arms to poke our core and connect us with our untouched emotions And lastly, we're approaching sleepy time. Sleep and wake up with the sun capitalize on the healing effects of sleep. Sleep used to be honestly a chore to me, something that got in the way of my working days. And now that I'm saying this out loud, it sounds so silly. Now I've reframed it as something healing and beneficial for me. So it's something that I look forward to. It's something that I'm incredibly grateful for. And it's really changed the way I sleep and view sleep altogether. Yeah, sleep is very important. Rest is very important. And if you need a permission slip or an excuse to sleep more this winter, here it is. According to traditional Chinese medicine, rest up in winter. And with that, thank you guys so much for joining. As always, here's the biggest voice hug ever. I don't know why that just went so low. Thank you so much to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. And we'll see each other next week for social wellness. Bye-bye!